What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE match finishes that nobody saw coming. It's, I guess you could say it's, it's rare. It's rare, especially in WWE nowadays, since a lot of people are checking the dirt sheets and online and social media and and you know we you know a lot of the the hardcore fans kind of have a gauge of where WWE may go you know what i'm saying which is the information that they've been given and just being able to put two and two it two, two and two together you can kind of figure out where storyline where a match may go but it's those rare instances where you don't know or not even don't know you think you know and then all of a sudden boom wait a minute and you know what i'm saying wait i didn't see this this the match ending like this i didn't see this this match you know going to this decision wait the this person won it's rare sometimes it can be good you know an overall a positive reception from the fans and then sometimes the reception can be negative because it may not make sense to a lot of the fans at the time of the booking so it's rare that it does happen where wwe is able to fool everybody or majority of the people um watching these shows and matches but when they are able to it does create conversation right afterwards so we're gonna check this out Appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channels by WrestleMania. But there have been several and, match finishes uh, in W. Yeah, let's get right into this bad boy. WWE that have completely stunned the fan base. This can either be because <clears> the victor <throat> in the match was the wrestler that fans simply didn't expect, or the finish comes completely out of nowhere and fans are left in total shock as to what they've just witnessed. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE match finishes that nobody saw coming. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. Mankind vs. Triple H at SummerSlam 99. At the main event of the 99 SummerSlam event saw Stone Cold Steve Austin defend his WWE title against both Mankind and Triple H. Now going into the match, it was fully anticipated by the fanbase that this was to be Triple H's night. The game had received a substantial push throughout the summer of 99 and it was expected that this was going to culminate with the game winning the big one at SummerSlam. However, when Mankind delivered a double arm crazy. DDT on Austin and pinned him to win the match in the title, fans were absolutely stunned. Even JR and Jerry Lawler on commentary were completely flabbergasted. Now, there are several theories as to why Mankind won the match. One theory states that Austin did want to lose the title to Triple H, but this was debunked when Austin put the game over two months later. Hmm. The more logical theory is that the guest referee for the match, Jesse Ventura, didn't want to raise the hand of a heel, so that's why WWE went with a Mankind victory. Mankind's hmm. WWE title reign would be short-lived though, as on the next night on Raw, Triple H would defeat Mankind to capture his first ever world title in the there company. There you go. <laughs> Number 9, Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 28. Oh, but during the build man. to WrestleMania 28, Daniel Bryan's popularity was beginning to take off in WWE. Yes, and it was. Thought there was actually a chance that WWE would decide against Bryan losing his world title to the 2012 Royal Rumble winner Sheamus. However, when the match ended within 18 seconds at WrestleMania 28, fans were left speechless. Fans predicted a lengthy match between the two and some yeah. expected the match to steal the show. 18 seconds was a massive disservice and WWE believed that the fans would love the finish but no. they certainly didn't. Instead of the match finish making Sheamus into an ultra popular babyface, Brian slowly but surely turned into one of the single most popular talents in WWE. And it's crazy, that right there, that right there, that's where things start to catapult for him. Because I believe Daniel Bryan at that time was a heel. He was a heel. And people who had, there were some people at WrestleMania that had the yes signs and he was doing no. And that's when things, even as a heel, they was like, that's not what's up. And that's when the yes movement started to really grow. And his popularity started to skyrocket because people were like, this was a disservice. That's crazy. Their decision doing that ultimately helped him get to where he was in WWE. WWE history. 
Number 8, Goldberg vs The Fiend at Super Showdown 2020 oh. When it was announced that The Fiend would defend the Universal title against Goldberg at Super Showdown, it looked like the match was going to be a stopgap for The Fiend on the road to WrestleMania 36. Oh. Initial creative plans for WrestleMania 36 called for The Fiend to defend his title against Roman Reigns, but in one of the most infamous booking decisions ever, they had The Fiend lose to Goldberg. The Fiend before the match with Goldberg was presented as an unstoppable force, and the wrestling community was outraged that they would sacrifice such an exciting and compelling character in favour of another Goldberg title win. One of the main issues in the match was how poorly WWE presented The Fiend. He didn't look remotely credible, and he lost to a version of the Jackhammer that looked more like a suplex. It was a terrible move from WWE to have Goldberg win the title, and this match is going to be criticized and loathed for many years to come. Yeah, that was the wrong booking decision. The wrong booking decision. Just why? Why? Bro, I ain't going to lie to you. That really just, I was done. I was like, yep. Yeah. I was really like, get Goldberg out of here, bro. Get him out of here, bro. This is, this is, no. No, no, that's all I'm going to say. No, no. <laughs> Number seven, Triple H versus The Rock versus Mick Foley versus The Big Show at WrestleMania 16. WrestleMania 16 was to be The Rock's finest hour. He was rumored to win the WWE title in the main event and he would defeat Triple H, Mick Foley and The Big Show in a fatal four-way matchup. However, when Vince McMahon shockingly turned on the Great One, allowing the game to retain the title, it made for one of the most surprising match finishes of the mm -hmm. Attitude Era. Following the initial surprise of the match finish hitting fans, the surprise quickly turned to anger as it proceeded to throw rubbish into the ring. They yep. <laughs> realized that The Rock should have dethroned the game at WrestleMania, and it was the next month at Backlash where The Rock would finally defeat the game to become WWE Champion once again. <laughs> Number six, Brock Lesnar. That's, that's back when Vince wanted all that. Vince wanted you to throw trash. Vince wanted you to, you know what I'm saying, the fans to get upset. It made it made for better, you know, just the overall television and the view. Like, the fans are upset, they're irate. Oh, no, not this one. Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston on SmackDown in 2019. Oh, no. Kofi Mania was one of the finest storylines of the modern era, but the end of mm. Kofi Kingston's WWE title reign was handled completely backwards. Just, Kingston uh. would take on Brock Lesnar on the 20th anniversary of SmackDown special, and whilst fans anticipated Kingston to be dethroned by Lesnar, yeah, we knew squash it match lose. seemed to be out of the question. Yeah. In shocking fashion, Lesnar <laughs> performed a single F5 and pinned Kingston in 8 seconds to win the title. This was a massive spin in the face of Kingston and all of his celebrated work. Kingston going down with the fight would have made for a compelling story, but they just couldn't resist the squash match formula when it came to Lesnar, and it was incredibly disappointing as a fan to witness. Yeah, bro, just imagine you've been in a company for so long, you finally get the WWE Championship. You don't have the best title reign that you could expect or hope for after so many years of, you know, being in the company, but, you know, saying, so, you know, you had a lengthy title reign, you, uh, you became the champion. You know you're going to lose to Brock, that's fine, but at least you put on a match where the fans say, damn, Kofi gave it all he could, but Brock is just too powerful to overcome. And then you get squashed in eight seconds. And then, after that, you just forget that the WWE Championship ever existed. You don't try to go back for it. You don't try to offer up a rematch. You just go back to serving pancakes in the mid-card division. Go back to catering. Number five, John Cena versus Sheamus at TLC 2009. John Cena's oh, WWE yeah. title match versus Sheamus at the TLC pay-per-view in 2009 seemingly came out of nowhere. Sheamus was relatively new to the mm -hmm. Raw brand and he was already being thrown into the deep end with a pay-per-view match with WWE's top guy. Yeah, I remember the match this. would be a tables match and heading into the match, no one was predicting WWE yeah. to actually pull the trigger on a Sheamus win, but they did the unthinkable. In an awkward finish, Sheamus would push Cena off the top rope and he crashed right through a the table, table yeah. ending the match. Sheamus would then be declared as a new champion as the crowd in attendance sat in utter disbelief. Yep, that's like, wait, what a minute, what? As an untested guy was now the WWE champion. 
was a huge risk though that luckily paid off as Seamus has been a consistent talent for the company since this moment back in 2009 and he's mm -hmm. widely regarded as one of the best workers in the entire WWE. Number 4 Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Rock yeah. at WrestleMania 17. That, that's a and good nobody moment. could have ever predicted the finish to the match between Steve Austin and The Rock no. at WrestleMania 17. <laughs> Austin would turn heel siding with Vince McMahon in one of the most surprising yet backwards match finishes in WWE history. Going into the match, it seemed like the logical outcome was Austin getting the win, but a heel turn seemed out of the question. No one saw Fans that coming. Were critical of a heel turn mainly because it didn't make any sense for Austin to side with McMahon, and many fans believed it to be a character killing match finish that could have been easily avoided. Number three, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series 2016. This one was really Upon shocking. a 12-year absence, Goldberg returned to WWE in 2016 for what appeared to and be... And at this point, I was like, okay, I'm all for Goldberg being back. At this point, when he came back, I was like, this is cool. It's just beating Kevin Owens. I was like, uh, the way he beat Kevin Owens, I wasn't a big fan of. The way he beat The Fiend, I wasn't a big fan of. So I was like, uh. But outside of that, I was glad that he was back initially. In one match only appearance, Goldberg would collide with Brock Lesnar in the main event of Survivor Series in a WrestleMania 20 rematch. The match was designed to promote WWE 2K17 mm -hmm. and due to Lesnar being on the cover of the game and Lesnar being a regular performer in WWE, everyone was under the impression that Lesnar would actually win. Yeah. However, in a move that stunned fans, Goldberg squashed Lesnar in she just over a minute. Them, this was unbelievable as Lesnar had never been manhandled in this manner. It later surfaced that this was Lesnar's idea who believed that there was a substantial story to tell with Goldberg regaining his credibility in WWE mm -hmm. and WWE booking an eventual rematch between the two yeah. down the line. Number two, The Shield versus T. I remember watching that. I, I, I just remember watching that live. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, Brock's going to win at some point. And then the match being over that quick, I was legitimately shocked. It was like, I couldn't believe what I had saw. That was, hey, kudos to Brock. Got to give him props here, man. He called the right, he called the right move here. Goldberg winning in, in that short fashion definitely made fans like, oh, that's the Goldberg we remember from WCW. That's the Goldberg. Team you know? Hell No and Randy Orton on SmackDown 2013. The Shield were unstoppable as a faction from their initial debut in 2012 and they remained unbeaten for the first seven months of their careers. Mm -hmm. However, on a random episode of SmackDown, their unbeaten record was shattered. Yeah. The Shield would team up to take on Team Hell No and Randy Orton and this just seemed like a typical Shield match where they would end up getting the win. But to the surprise of everyone, when Daniel Bryan locked in the yes lock on Seth Rollins, Rollins tapped out. The fans in attendance came unglued as mm -hmm. nobody anticipated a moment of this magnitude to happen on a taped edition of SmackDown. That was a so nice was sequence, a huge too. Deal. When the Shield would eventually lose, it was believed that it would take place on a huge pay-per-view such mm -hmm. as WrestleMania, but the fact that it was on a random and seemingly standard episode of SmackDown highlighted that iconic WWE moments can happen when fans least expect them to. And this is where a good lengthy um, a win streak especially if you're pushing a group or an individual it that that can play into it especially if it's done right it can play into it and then when that person finally loses it creates that moment like oh my god they lost and then people can be like oh i was at that smackdown when the shield finally lost you know so it, it creates multiple incentives for people to check out the show the weekly shows because you never know what's going to happen people to go to the shows because you never know what's going to happen and it can just potentially boost or elevate uh, a certain wrestler or their character for being the one to beat this undefeated streak or whatever and number one brock lesnar versus undertaker uh, at yeah. wrestlemania of 13 course. the undertaker's wrestlemania win streak was legendary of for the course. longest time nobody could have ever imagined it to end However, when Lesnar pinned the dead man's shoulders to the mat at WrestleMania 30, an eerie silence fell over the audience. I couldn't Initial believe it. Initial reactions were a state of confusion as fans couldn't believe what I they had witnessed. I, I couldn't believe it. Some believed believe it to be a mistake, while some just couldn't emotionally react to such an insane moment in time. Could not WWE believe it. WWE presented the match finish amazingly. As Lesnar's music didn't even hit immediately following mm -mm. the 1, 2, 3, and all the focus was on the energy and emotion of the audience. While some were critical of their decision to end the streak, the response from the fan base in attendance at WrestleMania 30 was like nothing had yeah. ever been seen before. 
It was truly captivating. People were legit. And a match finish that nobody saw coming. Shocked. But there you have it, folks. Ten I still... I don't think... I don't think the streak should have ended there. That's that's gonna be always be my stand on it. It shouldn't have ended with Brock. It should have ended most likely with Roman Reigns. I, I know some people feel like it should have never ended, but I do think at some point someone needed to be able to take that. And what better way of anyone taking that than Roman Reigns? Imagine we just go back to a world, and I've probably said this before. Imagine a world. Where Roman Reigns is, you know, getting booed. No one really likes him. A couple people like him, but he's mostly getting booed. He faces The Undertaker or whatnot, and he beats him. They have a good match, a really great match. He beats him. Maybe even retires him at WrestleMania. Because that could be that could be a passing of a torch moment if the match is good and Undertaker's healthy. Beats him. And it takes a lot to beat him, but he beats him. He may even, you know, you're saying, you could even have him cheat if you wanted to. If you really wanted to get that real heel heat, have him cheat. You could do that. But say you, you have him beat him clean. It took everything in his power to do it. Like infamously, that night after WrestleMania where he was booed out the building for 20 minutes, have him heal it up. And there you go. There you go. It, it, that, that's it. He would be the most hated star, but he would be the most watched star. People will pay money just to hate him, to boo him. He he would have been a made man, could have had him as a heel, could have had him become the champion at that point. You, you know, you just have him do whatever it takes to win. Easy. We would have probably a version of the tribal chief then rather than now they would have pulled the trigger then that's the only instance i think the streak should have ever been broken is to catapult roman reigns who needed it because he was already getting negative reactions now let's make money from him getting these negative reactions let's build it up that's my only thing but comment down below let me know some other shocking moments and matches that you didn't see coming another shocking one for me uh, Brock Lesnar squashing John Cena. I never saw that coming. I don't think anyone saw that coming. And the fact that that happened was insane. So if you got any other shocking moments that you just didn't see coming in wrestling, especially in WWE, comment down below. Let me know. But appreciate all the love and support. You guys are showing on channel Road 250K, and I'm still the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.